there's a third way, and we call it seeking, seeking the peace of the city. So here's what Jeremiah writes. I hope you can, you can see it the next slide. These, these are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem to the surviving elders of the exiles and to the priests, the prophets, and all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had taken into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. And he says this, verse 5, build houses and live in them, plant gardens and eat their produce, take wives and have sons and daughters, take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and do not decrease, but seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf, for in its welfare you will find your welfare." What was he doing? Well, we know from an earlier passage that he was countering the false prophet. The false prophet was telling them not to go in and assimilate, which is a, a real fear, but, don't, but, but he was countering them and saying, don't stay outside of the city in your suburban context, but actually go into the city. So reject assimilation, but also reject tribalism, and there's a third alternative, seek the peace of the city. Actually go in to the city and thrive. And what was he telling them to do? The first thing he was telling them to do is to become resident aliens. He was telling them to go in and thrive in the city. And how do we know that? He says because he's telling them to increase. Well, how do you know if you're increasing? As Jews, they're counting. You know because you can count people, and you know you're going to count people who are still Jewish. In other words, they are actually increasing as they go in. But they're going in as someone who, who, are, who, are, uh, who are resident aliens, not aliens on the outside. They may be different than the surrounding culture, but they're, they're figuring out ways to be different from the culture even as they reside in the culture. And that's the key. And that's why the book of Daniel is so helpful. If you look at Daniel's life, he was educated at, with the, in the best universities, and he was given all the major privileges, and he was promoted very quickly. But at the same time, he found out how not to assimilate and how to continue uh, to seek the peace of the city by being distinct. And that's the great challenge. The two false alternatives are, are easy. It's easy to just figure out how to, to give in and assimilate and everything, and it's easy to, to become tribalistic. What is much more difficult is figure out how to understand your culture, live in the culture, be a resident in the culture, but be an alien at the same time. When I was uh, at Georgetown, it was a real challenge. I, you know, I felt like in a sense like Daniel where, where the, they want to form you in their own image, particularly when you're in a graduate program. They want you to come out as their disciple. They want you to, to really buy into that. And I'll never forget that when I, when, probably one of the classes that was the greatest challenge in professors, uh, this would have been 1991, 92. It was a few years after the Berlin Wall had fallen. And so I couldn't understand when w world Marxism had been completely discredited why I had to take a class at Georgetown in Marxism. And I, it, just, it just struck me as, as kind of historic archaeology at that point. So I thought, okay, I will. But the professor just, you know, wanted me to work so hard for me to embrace Marxism the way he had, he had fallen in, in, in love with it. Um, and it was a challenge because he was very persuasive. Uh, he was, it was very convincing. He was energetic. He was an evangelist for, for Marxism. I mean, it was a little harder then because the wall had fallen than it might have been three years earlier for him. But he was trying to do what? He was trying to, begins with an A, he was trying to assimilate me into that. And the question is, I, you know, I want to survive at Georgetown. I want an A from this professor. I've got to do well because um, eventually I've got to get through his comprehensive exam. Uh, how do I do that? I mean, that's what Daniel was facing. Daniel was facing that struggle. How does he… I mean, he obviously did so well that they kept promoting him over the years where he was the right-hand man for a lot, of, a lot of kings, and yet he was able to maintain his alien status. He was able to maintain his distinctive as a believer. And we know that when he did it, you know, the, the, when, and when his, when his uh, brothers did, his friends did that, they were, they were, their lives were put at stake. But he was able to find a way. Now, how did I do that at the time? Well, the best thing I could think of at the time, because it, it had nothing to do with food and what I was going to eat and diet and all that, but what I, I remember what I would did one, one time, I, um, I got on the phone and I called my friend Byron, who's at Hearts and Minds Bookstores in rural Pennsylvania. Does anybody know Hearts and Minds Bookstore? It's a great bookstore, and, and read his reviews. It's tremendous. 
his, his book reviews. I'd call Byron. This is before Amazon. I know that's, you know, for, for the younger folks here, that's hard to imagine. There was a time before it was before Amazon, B.A. Um, but but th there was a time, and you couldn't just do your research and find books. So I would call him and say, I've got this class on Marxism. The guy's trying to assimilate me into Marx. How, how can I think Christianly about Marx? So he, 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 he listed off a bunch of books. I said, send them all to me. And I began reading so that I could think critically and understand Marx and understand it from a Christian perspective. Now, it, it, it increased my workload. It doubled my workload. Uh, and it, that's what, ha you know, happens when you're trying to be a resident alien, because you've got to exegete the culture, you've got to understand the culture, but at the same time, you've got to figure out what the Scripture's saying, what your worldview's saying, what, what the, the philosophy from a Christian perspective is saying. It doubles the workload, but that's what we're, that hard work is necessary for you and your congregations if they're not going to be assimilated in, into any culture, into any culture. Uh, and, and, and as part of what we're doing. So, we, we, so Daniel was sent in there, and he learned how to be a resident alien. But he also learned and was told by Jeremiah to pray for the city, to seek the peace of the city. Now, think about this. This was Babylon. This was one of the most wicked, despicable, pagan cities on the face of the earth. And a, the, the true prophet Jeremiah is telling him to seek the peace and, and actually love the city. And in, 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 in saying to him that as you seek the peace of the city, as you seek its welfare, it will also be your welfare at the same time. As the city is bettered and strengthened, it will also come back to help you. That's what, he, that's what he was saying to him. And he was telling them to fully, in a sense, fully integrate into the city and to care about it. That's pretty radical. I, I don't know what your city is like here. I don't know what the urban core is like. I, you know, sometimes cities are, are dark places. Sometimes they're menacing places. Sometimes they're not the kind of place you want to raise your kids. Sometimes they're not the place you want to be involved in the culture. But this is, that, that was Babylon, and Jeremiah is telling them to, to seek it, to seek the peace, to, to bring shalom to it. What does that look like? It doesn't say to just accept everything of the city turn a blind eye to the city, but find out ways for w what it would mean to actually seek the peace of, of the city. Um, I, 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 wasn't, I didn't, wasn't involved in it personally, but I, I heard the story of what took place in Portland uh, with the, the, the Louis Palau big evangelistic conference that they do up in Portland every year. And um, it was great to see. I saw the video for it, but, but for years they had done their own thing. The churches would get together and they would hold an evangelistic campaign in the downtown park, uh, and it was just kind of their thing, and they would preach the gospel. But then they decided, what, what if we actually s sought the peace of the city? And what if all of our churches figured out what that meant? And so what they did is they went to um, the city council and they said, for this two-day period over the weekend, we want, to see, we want to seek the peace of the city. We want to see the city bettered, and we want to help. Can you tell us for two days, what can we do? And so the city council lo always loves that question because, you know, they, 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 there's always more than they can do. And they presented them with hundreds of tasks to do. And so the churches mobilized thousands of volunteers, and for two days they spread out over the city, and they just loved the city, gave to the city, and, and, and literally poured themselves into, into these projects. And so that by the time they got up for, to their evangelistic, to do their evangelistic crusade, they could actually say, we, we love the city. We've been seeking the shalom of the city. Well, then they, they interviewed the, the main, the, you know, the, um, the guy who was head of the, the, the city council, uh, and you could tell that before this weekend had taken place, they were at odds with one another by what he said. And, but you could tell that this had changed his mind about the church, about Christians, about who they are. Uh, I'm not saying he, he had converted and become a believer, but he had a whole new appreciation of what the power of the church and what Christians could do in a city when they were mobilized to seek the peace of the city.